Grandma Davis uh, knew Harold very well. It was difficult not to know Harold if you were a microbiologist. And it was by that time very well established and very highly respected. So he told me, he, you're going to really enjoy meeting Harold. And so, so of course, uh, he was right. Uh, meeting Harold at this, at this uh, interview was a, a, a delight. He wanted to talk science. He was really interested in my science. But he also said, uh, he, he looked at me and says, you look sort of thin. You, you don't eat enough. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, don't tell me you're one of these people who, who does exercise. <laughs> I ended up meeting and uh, playing Harold Amos uh, in tennis. And that's how I, I, I first met him. He always won. He was a very good tennis player, actually. Um, and he, he always won. But it was fun playing with him and it was enjoyable. As a young scientist just coming out of postdoctoral work, I was offered a job here at the medical school in the bacteriology department. And he was a fellow faculty member. Um, and I arrived and he was just the friendliest you, you could imagine. Particularly in those days, I think it was a little, much more stiffness at Harvard, but Harold was not stiff at all. He was incredibly warm and, and friendly and helpful and welcoming full scholarship to Springfield College in the mid-1930s, unique in its own right, in the service, returned here to, to get his PhD in the medical sciences, and then establish his own prominent track record in research, but always cultivating students, cultivating young faculty behind himself. So all of his extraordinary life he was called a jewel, a jewel in this world. You know, he was such a humble man. He, he never would talk about me as the first uh, African-American who did my PhD here, who served as faculty member, who was chair of a department, never. I mean, it was clear that he had done it, and he was very much somebody who wanted to be proactive about the opportunity that was offered to other people in minorities, very much so. I arrived in 65, and that was a new era, really. I mean, I didn't bring the new era with me, it was there. He certainly became very active during that period, as many of us did, in pushing the uh, medical school to bring in more uh, minority students. There were, on average, one black medical student every two years. So it's half, half a, a black medical student per year. It was really the medical people who were very strongly opposed to bringing in the African-American students to the medical school, uh, with the argument being that we were going to bring people who were not qualified to, to the medical school. So we had to make the argument that um, and this is what Harvard likes to hear is, this is a new era coming. If you bring, if you bring in more African-Americans into the medical school, um, they are gonna become leaders in the country and Harvard always wants to be responsible for determining who the leaders of the country in various fields are going to be. And I remember there was a, a very serious debate. Some people were very upset or tried to water it down. There was another African-American doctor in the, in the medical school uh, who got up at this meeting and said I can't remember the exact wording but you know we don't we don't want to be you know taken care of by you we want to be able to take care of ourselves which really at that point we thought was going to uh, destroy the argument at this debate among the faculty members and Harold stood up and very gently responded very differently and that sort of turned the well to some extent turned the tide in the discussions. He was the most wonderful gentleman, uh, civilized human being that had, uh, that had a great heart and his heart was in the right place and he promoted the educational uh, mission of this, of this uh, uh, university or this medical school. It's all the directors of all of the programs uh, that would get together and then each program would present its, its candidates and then the big group would then discuss and he personally took great care in looking at each one of those applications and making sure that nobody was being left behind 
uh, that might, uh, might, might be very much worth giving an opportunity would make sure that they would not be left behind. And I think that was, so, so rather than being very pushy about it, he did a very gentle way of making sure that uh, they would be considered. Yeah. So you got to remember that our department was pretty much a basic science department. He wasn't a medical doctor, I'm not a medical doctor. So the students we dealt with most or most closely were graduate students, not the medical students. But in spite of that, he was, uh, he found, he found students who came into medical school who were African-American and worked with them and, and mentored them. He was, in so many ways, an, uh, another extraordinary pers person, personages within the history of Harvard Medicine, a professor's professor, somebody who was also kind, committed, a researcher, uh, an insightful individual, uh, forever looking out for students. One needs lots of champions of diversity. It's important to maintain that award and it's important to name the award um, uh, for the first African-American professor at Harvard Medical School, uh, which had to be an enormous breakthrough. Quite often these awards, decades after somebody has uh, died, are given and, and people are happy with the award, but they do not know anything about it. And I think Harold is so special that uh, it's, it, it's uh, very important that whoever gives the award makes sure that the recipient knows who Harold was. He was a great human, and you can be absolutely honored by the fact that this great human is the name of the award that you receive. And, and I would hope that you can, regardless of who you are, you can try to emulate that humanity.